down. Can we do the roll? Yes, sir. Mr. Eaton? Present. Ms. Davis? Present. Mr. Finnerty? Present. Mr. Patel? Present. Mr. Chairman? Present. Present. Huh? I can see like Okay, you need a, an approval of a February 23rd meeting minutes. Uh, I need a motion and a second. I'll move. All right. Second. Second. Okay, down on the, on the uh, approval of the minutes. Take the roll. Mr. Eaton? Aye. Ms. Davis? Aye. Mr. Finnerty? Aye. Mr. Patel? Yes. And Mr. Chairman? Aye. All right. Approval of minutes carries five to nothing. Okay. Uh, is there someone here for the uh, the project up uh, with Peterville project? Yeah. No, we're gonna do you guys. We're waiting for that stuff to come for you guys. So we'll do you at the end probably. Here. State your name and everything for the record. Good evening, everybody. My name is George Albert. We're representing Hunter Truck Sales, Hunter Realty, LLC, uh, with regard to the uh, Peterbilt project on Stafford Ave. Okay, now, tell us whatever you want to tell us. Absolutely, thank you uh, for your time. Um, we're excited to be here, uh, finally, after working on this project for about three years through the pandemic. Uh, Hunter Truck Sales is uh, working to relocate their facility, which is currently in Tannersville on 611 into the city of Scranton. Uh, we're proposing the construction of a new sales service center um, on Stafford Avenue right off of Davis Street. Uh, there's going to be two buildings proposed for this project, uh, one single 38,000 square foot building, which would include the sales uh, center and maintenance facility, and then a standalone approximately 10,000 square foot body shop. Um, the plans in front of the commission tonight, as I mentioned, it's uh, located right on uh, Stafford Avenue um, off of Davis Street. And uh, this project uh, will, upon its completion, create approximately 80 new jobs in the city. So uh, we're excited to represent uh, Hunter Truck and uh, Peterbilt with this new venture and uh, look forward to uh, working with the city to get it done. Well, Sounds like a great project. Is it similar to the one that's on 80? It is. Yeah. I see that every time I go to Jersey. Yep, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, Hunter Truck is out of Pittsburgh, and uh, they have several locations uh, along the Northeast Corridor. And mm -hmm. again, they're relocating the facility from uh, down in Tannersville up, up to the city of Scranton. Oh, so. Does Commission have any more qu any questions for you? Just uh, out of curiosity, of those 80 jobs created, how many are permanent and how many are temporary with construction? Uh, the, all 80 are uh, new jobs, permanent jobs, related to the facility. Construction jobs here, probably about 150 during the tenor of the new building construction. And do you have a timeline on how long the building will take? Uh, we want to get it up as soon as we can because we have to vacate the Tannersville facility in July. Oh, so know. we're going to have a gap in, uh, in our service. Um, we're expecting, hopefully, to finish this project by uh, early winter of 24. And how far along are you currently with construction? Because site work has begun, correct? Correct. So uh, the site's been graded. Uh, we've been awarded a grading permit by the city. It's been graded. All the stormwater improvements are in. All the erosion control features are installed. So uh, presently, right now, we're just uh, we're waiting to start foundations. Just out of curiosity, so you, you have to vacate your current premise by July of this year, and you're not going to have your new building until early 24. Is that right? Correct. Wow. 
So we're, we're desperately searching for a temporary location. Oh, well, that, you anticipated my question. Right? So we have a couple options, and uh, hopefully we, we find something in the city or close there, too, where, where we can get, uh, get our services started. Okay. Up. So, Don, are we, is this a project that's already been in? We haven't, or are we just taking it in? No, that this this is ready for final approval. Final approval. I, I gave you the yeah. the engineer's letter. Uh, we're yeah. down to, to to six comments. Right. There, I mean, besides signing the sheets and everything, which we don't have them do until it's approved, which is the first two. Yeah. Uh, the other four are outside agency approvals. Yeah. So we would typically grant a conditional approval conditioned on them receiving those outside agency approvals. All right. So, so, so we, you can bring it to a vote. Yes. Okay. Yes. I, the the motion the would be for a, a, a approval of the final land development plan. Okay. So does the commission all understand? Because we have to vote. A motion. Well, the the a motion second. would be for conditional final approval. Yeah. Conditional. Right. Yeah. Final approval conditioned on the the, the four uh, conditions, three, four, five, and six. Well, we can make it conditional on all six. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I will second just, the motion. Yeah. Right. We have a second. Hey, Jack seconded. I seconded. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, who was the, who, who was first? Jennifer. Mo well, she made the motion. We can make this more formal. I, I'll make the motion that we grant uh, final approval conditional upon meeting the six um, provisions outlined in the April fifth. 2023 okay. letter. And I will second that motion again. <laughs> Thank you. On the motion, Ms. Reeton? Aye. Ms. Davis? Aye. Mr. Finnerty? Aye. Mr. Patel? Aye. And Mr. Chairman? Yes. <clears throat> you got your project going there. You're all set. Motion carries okay. five to zero. Okay. Look forward to seeing you there. Welcome Likewise, the thank city. you so much for your time. We we'll look yeah. forward thank to Thank you for coming. Yes. You as well. Okay, so like, uh, is it set up for the girls? <clears throat> yeah, so on the agenda, we have a guest presentation, uh, the Penn State University Local Climate Action Program, and this is a presentation on the climate action initiatives. Thank you. Um, we're getting set up a little bit. We also have um, one of our colleagues on the Zoom, so we'll play it by ear and put her up to the microphone when it's time to present. Okay. Um, but thank you for having us. We're really excited to be here. Um, I'm from New Jersey, so I've never been to Scranton, so this is my first time. Mm -hmm. um, and Emma, my colleague here, has been here quite a number of times uh, throughout her childhood, so this is a really wonderful opportunity. Can everyone see that all right? Yep. Awesome. Well, again, hi. Thanks for having us. Um, I'm Bella Bersenio, um, and I'm part of just one of our team members um, who worked with uh, Craig Beavers and Eileen Cipriani in the Office of Community and Economic Development over the better part of a year now. Um, so this is really the culmination of a year's work of collaboration between uh, Penn State University, um, us students, our advisors, Peter Buck and Brady Robinson, and um, some Scranton folks. So we're very excited to kind of dive into what this year has entailed. Would you become 
Bill, if I just spoke with this microphone, or would you like me to go to the uh, it, 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 Either one, so we, so we could hear you. Okay. So, climate change is causing shifts across the globe. Um, but specifically, the 2021 Pennsylvania Climate Impacts Assessment states that climate change is going to impact Pennsylvania in the following ways, whether it be directly or indirectly, and this impacts Scranton as well. Increasing average temperatures and heat waves put stress on infrastructure and heating and cooling facilities. Heavy precipitation leads to inland flooding. And indirectly, landslides, sea level rise, and severe tropical and extratropical cyclones leads to human displacement and supply chain disruption, which can also impact our way of life. This is why it's more important than ever to adapt and implement climate change adaptation tactics, such as reducing greenhouse gas emissions by municipality. And while climate change definitely presents some threats, we also see it as presenting opportunities um, for municipalities, for individuals, for communities to look long term and see what is sustainable you know, 10, 20, 30 years from now. Um, but just to kind of tie it back to this commission and why it's relevant outside of some of the you know, climate related things we'll feel as individuals and communities, um, land use is inextricably tied to climate change as well. Um, so it's a beneficial thing that we have more land cover, more green spaces that are able to essentially reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the atmosphere therefore um, combating climate change. But just as it's a beneficial relationship, it's also reciprocal in the sense that negative impacts have um, not only changing climate-related consequences, but land use uh, consequences as well. So we know that increasing temperatures, increasing flooding events, precipitation, dictate what crops farmers can, can plant dictates the land use um, applications for agriculture following a flooding event, um, which are expected to become more and more frequent. So keeping these things in mind and seeing how um, our land use planning in the future um, is going to run into climate change is something that we want to keep as a frame um, as we kind of go into some of the positive sides of our collaboration this year. So next, I'm going to spend a few moments discussing um, Scranton's greenhouse gas inventory, which was calculated using ClearPath, which is a greenhouse gas inventory calculation software. So here you can see a breakdown of um, emissions by sector and metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalents. So we have residential energy at approximately 229,000 metric tons. Um, commercial energy at approximately 185,000, industrial at 115, on road transportation, including gasoline and diesel, at 200. I apologize for the backlash. And solid waste at 30, and waste and wastewater, pretty small number, at 1,131, um, bringing total community wide emissions for Scranton to approximately 763,878,000 tons metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalents. And this is just a little visual, so you can see the largest emissions by sector um, is commercial energy, transportation and mobile sources, and residential energy. So after we completed the inventory, um, tracking data and getting that input into the software, we then began to implement long-term forecasting and um, monitoring and evaluation goals. So if you look at this chart, you can see the increasing emissions from 2019 when the inventory was calculated. We used data from 2019. It was calculated last semester all the way up until 2050. So you can see it increases as to be expected with the increase in population, increase in development. And then we established two reduction goals, um, the nationally determined contributions, which are internationally agreed upon um, reduction standards, 80% by 2050 is the green line running pretty low across the bottom, and that's a pretty substantial reduction. A little more feasible is the Pennsylvania Climate Action Plan 26% reduction by 2025, which is the orange line, not very easy to see, but just running a little bit halfway through the um, emissions. So those are the two that we calculated based on standard emissions reductions. 
So why do we take the time? What is the importance of long-term monitoring and evaluation? It's so Scranton can achieve its seven long-term goals. And I'm going to break down a little bit in this next slide. This is a screenshot of the available planning measures, just a few of them. The list is lengthy. Available on the ClearPath software. And I listed just a few, low flow shower heads, residential photovoltaic or solar panels, decreased food waste, energy education, LED street lights. You'll allow me to consult my notes. <clears throat> Green businesses promotes economic growth, prosperity, and development, one of Scranton's seven goals. LED street lights, residential photovoltaics, and low flow shower heads promotes community, economic, and climate resilience as well as energy conservation and emissions reductions, and arguably quality and affordable housing. And lastly, energy education and public transportation and development and accessibility and mobility. So just to show that implementing these reductions, reducing Scranton's greenhouse gas emissions is integral to help Scranton achieve its long-term economic development goals. Your turn, Candace. Oh, hold on, we're having some trouble hearing you. Give me one second. Hi, everyone, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. All right, perfect. Sorry I'm not there with you today. I actually live in Massachusetts, so I'm coming to you via stream. But I had such a great semester working with Craig um, and my team. As we, as a team, we created two strong policy memos for grants use related to sustainability and climate action initiatives. Springfield, Massachusetts and Providence, Rhode Island were picked on the basis of similarity in Scranton's economic and cultural character, geographic and Appalachia and relative size. Springfield's initiatives were very simple while focusing on supportive city and stock stakeholder commitments to greenhouse gas emissions by 80% in 2050. This initial milestone includes greening grid, energy efficiency, modifications to regulatory environmental incentives, and felicitating stakeholder action. Providence was based on the three pillars of sustainability, economic validity, environmental protection, and social equality. This initiative, this initiative shed light on the struggles of the 10 frontline communities fight for environmental justice. Okay. Yeah. And uh, go ahead, uh, Ella, on the proposal. Sure thing. So the other thing we did, um, acknowledging that Emma, Candace, and I are really graduating <laughs> in 10 days, but who's counting? Um, and what we've built with Craig over this course of the year is a start. But if climate action planning is to continue beyond us, it'll likely need external um, consulting help. So to kind of you know build that foundation, we created a draft request for proposal for just that, a consultant to come in and help um, with their professional uh, experiences and expertise, Scranton develop their own climate action plan. Um, now, that's really the end result. The consultant would be expected to do much more than just put together a plan. Um, considering that they might be external, a large part of their deliverables would include uh, developing a public engagement plan and really conducting and helping to lead those community engagement efforts. Um, we'll go into a little bit uh, a little bit later what we started to do on that front, but recognizing that Scranton has diverse groups um, of people, um, really making it accessible, having Spanish options, for example, for community engagement efforts is something that the consultant would have to take in mind. Um, but beyond that, we're also recommending that a consultant update the greenhouse gas inventory like Emma just showed. Um, it should be an annual thing because realistically emissions change you know, day to day, but it's much more manageable to do it year by year. So 
Not only would they be conducting an inventory, they would also be developing a metrics reporting toolkit so that we understand what we're measuring, who is in charge of measuring it, and when, on, on what kind of time basis. Um, and that would then culminate into a climate action plan, um, something that is probably a little bit more involved, but the groundwork is in plans such as the economic development plan um, and other sorts of legislation that's coming out. So. Candice, your turn. Okay, thank you, Bella. So as Emma introduced, the sectors that needed some work were residential, transportation, and um, commercial sectors. As a team, um, we came up with funding opportunities that are existing that can be implemented immediately and are the following. If you a few that our team would recommend based on Scranton's highest emission categories are the home energy performance based rebate. This is a $4.3 billion program through the Department of Energy that the state energy offices will operate. This program provides rebates for whole home retrofit packages in the commercial sector. We have the Clean School Bus Program. This is an existing program with $5 billion included in the IRA budget and administrated by the EPA. This program from, co provides competitive grants and rebates to state, local governments, and nonprofit school transportation associates to replace existing school buses with zero emission vehicles. And finally, in the transportation sector, the clean vehicle credit, this is a provision that is existing of $7,500 consumer tax credit for purchasing an, an eligible new clean vehicle. This includes plug-in hybrids, hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, and it also is beginning to qualify in the 2023 for pickup trucks, SUVs, and vans. Uh, starting next year, it's really exciting that taxpayers can transfer the credit to the dealer at the time of purchase to lower the vehicle price. So all of these were um, good recommendations that my team want to bring forth to Scranton, uh, considering that their biggest uh, missions are residential, commercial, and transportation. So okay. something on the community engagement side of things that we started to do was we developed a survey um, and collected 107 responses from community members here, um, really with the intent of getting some feedback. Um, again, it's helpful to know what issues people care about, um, what priorities they really would like Scranton to focus on so that we have a baseline for when we maybe do future surveys. So um, we developed it to have uh, about 15 questions, so it took people about three minutes. Um, there wasn't an incentive with it, but um, we had Craig help us disseminate it in proper channels, so we were able to get good response rates. Um, and it asked people everything about their climate change beliefs, um, what their priorities were, and some questions about what they enjoyed you know, living in Scranton the most. So. Um, some of the results, the first ones come from Yale's program on climate change communication. Um, four questions that they labeled their Six Americas super short survey, called SASE for short, um, really meant to get an idea of um, out of six climate change characters, we'll call them, where do people lie? Um, and as these results um, share, uh, and I'm sorry, this is a promotional material, so <laughs> Candace, um, I'll go back to you in a second. Um, but what these results share is that, by and large, the community was alarmed about climate change, which is the most engaged climate change character out of the six offered. Um, and when we go to the next slide real quick for um, the national population estimates, Comparing them to the national estimates, they are far more alarmed and concerned um, and far less disengaged, doubtful, and dismissive about climate change, telling us a, a good bit about where Scrantonians fit on the climate change belief scale. Um, now we're going to go back two slides for Candace to talk about promotional materials. Okay, thank you, um, Bella. 
As a team, we created the, a promotional flyer, both in English and Spanish, to increase the accessibility for Scranton's residents, as well as an infographic for smaller spaces. We also introduced a QR code to make the survey easily accessible. Go ahead. And if we go back to results, um, we asked, um, so if we go to the next slide, actually, please. Um, when we asked them what essentially they wanted a Scranton to focus on, um, we kind of divided that into two sort of questions. One is, what is your priorities? Um, almost like an inward facing um, beliefs test, as well as what are the actionable measures that Scranton can take? And just so happened that the top three um, results for each of those questions really correlated with each other. So we got a really good sense of what people care about. And it's um, walkability, it's sustainable infrastructure, um, and it's also waste management and renewable energy. And when we map these onto our inventory, we see that these are some of the areas, again, transportation, residential energy, that the greenhouse gas emitting sectors really correlate with. Um, so we started to see more of a narrative develop from there. So on the survey, um, when asked how would residents like to be interacted with on behalf of the municipality, on behalf of the city, overwhelmingly the response was a pop-up event, which is actually fantastic because this really allows the city to demonstrate its creativity. A pop-up event can be anywhere from um, a public art installation to a couple volunteers standing at a fold-up table with some interactive activities for children and adults um, to raise awareness for climate change action within the city and just in general. So we created an outline, um, just a template for the pop-up event, what to include, what to think about, how to engage with citizens. So that was our goal based on interaction events. So we had several interactive components, ideas for outreach and collaboration, whoever would like to plan a pop-up event. Hopefully we'll have a little bit of a jump start on the planning. And similarly, we looked into delivering forums as another engagement effort. Um, this is a little bit more um, involved than a pop-up event, but in general, we thought it was a good uh, community effort uh, in terms of getting feedback from people and having them understand that um, this isn't a debate as much as it's a deliberation of um, a future thinking conversation. Where do we go from here? What are solutions? As well as the drawbacks to any given number of initiatives that we might explore. Um, and this all feeds back into the climate action plan that would be developed because we're talking out some of these issues, um, you know, issues that community members might run into and how they would feel about them being implemented. And so finally, I know that was a lot, <laughs> um, just to bring it all back to this commission. Um, when we looked at Scranton Abington's um, planning associations plan, we noted several conservation oriented items on this plan. And again, if we can go back to the survey results, they really map onto the areas that community members care about. So when we look at public spaces and improving natural spaces that are available to the public, that's on here. Same with creating walk walkable and bikeable paths, that matches onto there as well as uh, just in general environmental resource protection. So the basis for it is there. But just to bring it all back out and why it's important, um, if we go to the next slide. Um, Really, this is about the long-term growth and health of our communities. Um, and like we kind of preluded to in the beginning, sustainability is um, a sustainable and climate action plan would embody that. Um, when we're looking long-term, it's how do we make 
Um, communities thrive both economically and environmentally, all while having a justice, a social justice lens. Um, so it really isn't just this commission's responsibility, quite obviously, but um, we hope it's an effort that um, spans commissions and councils across Scranton so that we're leveraging um, our you know, respective expertises um, to get to an overall inclusive climate action plan. So um, that's it from us. We will happily take any questions, um, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Um, thank you for presenting and spending time thinking about Scranton and how to make it better. I guess my question is, broadly speaking, from your position, how is Scranton doing overall? I mean, I know in looking at our first order of business, uh, part of it was a shade tree requirement for every however many square feet it's required to replace a, a deciduous shade tree. Um, beyond that, from like a third party objective perspective, how would you say Scranton is doing overall? A lot of our initial research on um, Scranton's initiatives and plans occurred last semester. Um, but I remember that we were quite impressed with all the initiatives, um, especially around sustainability, economic growth, and social development. Seems well-rounded and we're excited to see um, what the future holds. Yeah, absolutely, and I think, um, you know, we're members of a program, so we have several other cohorts that are going through the same exact process with other municipalities. And we've heard from our mentors that Scranton and our team are well above <laughs> and well ahead of other municipalities, not to, you know, do that them, you know, any ill will, but um, just in terms of the culture and the openness to climate change, it's surprising that that's you know even a question but it's something that Scranton has not had any pushback on and includes in something even as much as its economic development plan which is a link not readily made by other municipalities so things like the shade tree commission and um, advisory councils that are targeted towards environmental issues is already well ahead of the game certainly the emissions that we've shown are you know points of improvement um, but everyone's trying to go through that improvement too. So it's um, kind of incredible where you're at already. So I guess that sort of leads into my follow-up, which you alluded to. How does that stack up against our actual emissions? Because a plan is one thing, and it's essentially words on a piece of paper. Exactly. But if emissions are not being reduced or even going up, then it's sort of for, for not. So how does that line up? I think that's where our recommendation overall for a climate action plan is where it comes into play. Um, because while there's these efforts that certainly help, having something that's comprehensive, um, <laughs> um, but has implementation teeth too, because like you said, words are words, um, but having people behind it and a clear idea of who will be implementing these things um, will have to be a citywide effort, um, and it'll have to be an intentional effort. So um, I think that's kind of, I mean, add on to that, Emma, if you'd like, but. I think with, like Bella said, for instance, the implementation teeth, but with these measures, it'll be really exciting to see how these missions change, even over the next five years, as your developer, whoever um, receives the contract, starts planning, doing that annual greenhouse gas inventory. It'll be really interesting to see how it changes. And the funding opportunities that are available right now are off the charts. I'll wait again. Um, you know, this is a great time because there is, there are a lot of grants going around. We were just in a meeting earlier today that had, I mean, five slides worth of just different opportunities targeted towards renewable energy. So having solar be more available to residents, even ones that are in marginalized communities and might not have the means themselves to explore those. Um, but stuff like the Inflation Reduction Act have really opened the doors for this to be an uh, actual opportunity and something that doesn't put as much burden on each individual city wanting to explore it further. And, oh, sorry, go oh, ahead. Go ahead, Joe. One last question, sorry. The emissions that we are producing, are they representative of the type of economy that Scranton has? Like, would it make sense that the emissions show as they do, or is there some 
part of that data that may seem out of whack, whereas, you know, for example, we have like a overtly large residential emission or something like that. Unfortunately, when we got the data, it was just direct with the numbers, like the um, the tons of it that was being produced that we were converting into the clear path calculator. So we've gotten that per question, and we'd love to like break it down a little bit because of Scranton's history and acknowledging that it is a, like industrialized heavy um, and control for that. But that's certainly a great question. <laughs> I wish I had a better answer. No problem. Thank you. Industrial energy um, isn't quite as comparable to residential or commercial, which is an interesting assessment given Scranton's background. So I think that would be an interesting topic for further study. I will say we did break it down um, not only by natural gas, but by anthracic coal. And that was like marginally uh, committing to those emissions, although a lot of homes are still um, powered from coal. Um, it wasn't to the degree of the emissions that natural gas contributed. And you see natural gas is around 153,000 anthracite coal, about 96, for residential energy at the top. Thank you. Here we go. This one, yes, thank you. So to me, this is right. what's actionable that we can do. Um, so each of these are programs that currently exist and have funding available? Did you hear that question, Candace? Yes, yes, they currently exist. Um, we did highlight three that we uh, thought that Scranton might might like or might you know prefer but there is a lot of funding opportunity um, beyond this um, this was something that i put together and it's also available in the um the packet that uh craig has um but did you have a question about a specific uh funding opportunity no i think it's just you know some of this is is education to know that there are programs out there that can help people without maybe them having a you know significant capital output themselves. Um, so it, do you have recommendations on how have other communities spread the word about some of these initiatives? So for instance, yeah. the home, home energy performance-based rebates, right? The first one listed under residential. I'm guessing that's things like window replacements or um, a more efficient you know, heating system or furnace. So that's something a homeowner could do as an individual. Yeah. Right, exactly. And and um, some of our other recommendations too would be to have like a webinar or information se session, maybe at the pop-up event, something um, about these current existing funding opportunities because they really offer um, people like a set of relief when it comes to, you know, retrofitting a house, a whole entire house that's been built a long time ago. Scranton is an older city. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, absolutely. The advocacy could go beyond even um, like in-person meetups. You could do like a Facebook group. Um, I don't know if you have like a, a local municipality website or you could advertise some of these um, funding opportunities, but they are existing already and available for use, um, and they would greatly impact your emissions inventory, especially in the three, sector, three sectors, the residential, commercial, and transportation. And something else we're seeing too is on the ground kind of um, education sessions. So um, in one example in State College, a neighbor educated their neighbors about solar panels and the grants available to them and got over 20 households to start the process to get solar. So even having almost ambassadors or people who in, work in nonprofits perhaps that, or community groups that have for example, the access to um, you know, Latino communities or um, other communities around here, having some of those people educated and, and on the ground almost is another way to get people to feel like connected almost to um, some of these programs that do exist.
or even a group of individuals that's willing to be trained, really cares about the topic, like a citizen advocacy group mm -hmm. could be a fantastic, fantastic asset to help spread the word. Okay, thank you. Great ideas. Thank you. I, I have another question, if that's all right. Um, I have another question, if that's all right. Um, so we have, uh, for example, the, the tree replacement program. Have you seen in other communities, or would it be a recommendation for the city to implement some of these other types of regulations, like if you're building a, a parking lot, it should be covered with solar panels, or if you're building a new truck sales depot that's 30,000 square feet, then there would be incentives or even mandates to put on solar panels on the roof. Have you seen that in other communities or I guess comma for the city? Yes. Is that something that, that we've explored? Um, to we... answer your question, um, yes, I actually did a study on Cambridge, Massachusetts and they implemented the clean uh, school bus program there and it was extremely successful. Um, and. Uh, that's one thing that you could take a look at as maybe introduce that to your sustainable planner is that um, or the consultant is that there are a lot of other opportunities um, in that in that area for this clean school bus program and that's an easy way to implement uh, emission reduction within the community so and another thing is that there's growing market for carbon offsets for carbon credits. Mm -hmm. So what we're seeing is a lot of companies start to um, kind of sell these um, bonds. So let's say that there is an area that's going to be developed into a parking lot um, for any of the trees or anything like that that are being you know cut down, people will plant them in another spot to offset that impact. So um, there's growing markets for that. Um, and for the solar panel ideas, yes, like even in State College, you know, our Walmart <laughs> put solar panels on their roof um, to have that energy source. Um, and there's more and more technology coming out to make it so that we're adapting to some of the projects that we're continuing to develop. I, w I would like to echo uh, our gratitude for you appearing here tonight. Um, much to think about. And my first question is a logistical one. Is this PowerPoint presentation available to us online after tonight, or where is this? We can where does it reside? It's well, available online, but we'd be more than willing to, to forward it to Craig or, or Craig's replacement. Yeah. More. That, that'd be great. And, and the final thing I would have is a, an observation. Um, if I remember correctly, the population of Lackawanna County is around 210,000 people. But government is fragmented into 39, I think, uh, individual, uh, very sovereign, independent entities. And climate change is no respecter of political boundaries or politician egos. Mm -hmm. I think that Pennsylvania and, and certainly northeastern Pennsylvania faces a particular challenge because of that fragmentation. Um, and if you have any magic you want to share with us on that, please feel free. Yeah, unfortunately there is no <laughs> magic bullet, but... Darn! <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, I wish we could. Um, I think that's where something like a... And this is an, maybe an ideal world, we don't know the, the politics, but uh, something like a deliberative forum, you know, meets people where they're at. So it's um, having people show up with their opinions and trying to meet them where they are and show them how maybe they've been you know, misinformed about climate change and what that means and the benefits of taking climate action. Um, unfortunately, some people um, in those, you know, the six climate change characters I presented, those less engaged characters sometimes will never, you know, be reasoned with, um, which is a shame, but I think there's hope in the sense that there are a lot of people who who do want to see some of these actions happen. Um, and I just have to wonder if there's a way to extract those voices out and make them, you know, the forefront. But Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else have questions? All right. 
Well, I'd just like to thank you all for coming tonight like, and uh, speaking about this. It's this really important issue, uh, climate change. You know, uh, I wish we, our city recycled more, uh, especially with, with uh, waste. You know, we could do more, you know. All those bottles and beer cans, stuff like that, they could do things like they do in Oregon, where they, there's a place you can put them and you get paid so much for doing it, you know. Things like that is what we really need to push so the landfills don't fill up. That's yeah. just one second of thing. I know you guys are working on them all. Are you still in school? Or are you? For a it, week? For one more week. This is your, so this is your, what do you call it? Final call presentation, it? yeah. Yeah, this is, you, you should get an A. I'll tell you right now. You got an A. <laughs> well, our teacher's on the call. So. Our teacher's on the call. So. <laughs> my, my grandson's going to Penn State next year. We, we heard that. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for, for having them, by the way. We're just we're listening in and, and, and watching them present from, from down below. Thank you guys so much for being such good attendees and, and paying attention and letting them do this. Yeah, it's great. Yes, we're very grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank we'll be you. following up with the materials that we have, if there are any resources. So thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. We only got one thing left, guys. The German is the motion to adjourn. Dad, are we ready for your German? Or do we have anything else to discuss? Uh, we don't have any old business on there. I think we're through all the items on the agenda. So if yeah. You okay. Want, so motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. And help me out. Here. We have a motion to adjourn. I move. Second. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so moved. Thanks for coming, everybody. Have a good time. Thank good, you. Good job. Good meeting.